Hello everybody, welcome back to the channel. So we've done a minimum $39 million league cap draft and now we are going to go to the maximum. We are gonna set it to, I believe it's 125 mil. Yep, 125 is the maximum, which means the player's salary max, wow. Okay, I'm gonna kind of randomize some of these just because why not? Oh, you can turn off the wild card, that's pretty cool. Thanks, voice. Thank you. Oh, you can do a round of 32 and a wild card round. Now that is awesome. Once again, forgot to do it in play now, so I'm doing it right here. I will look at you guys and we will pick our team in three, two, one. Boom. Carolina. What a bunch of jerks, am I right? Don't even think about it. Jabroni, CPUs can trade. Player morale will leave that off. Fantasy draft, obviously. That's kind of why we're here. Let's say we get pick number 11. Just random throwing it out there and we get number four. Oh, so that is three studs off the board immediately but we still have nate mack and he is broken in this game so i'm gonna go ahead and take him easily next up i'm gonna take jake gensel to play alongside him and because we have so much cap i don't really have to worry about it let's draft dougie hamilton it worked out last time so i'm drafting tom wilson again and i should probably take a goalie see normally i would go for jari because he's making 3.5 but Bobrovsky, 10 mil, doesn't really matter. I mean, it still kind of does, but... Ooh, wait. Jari's got three abilities. That's a game changer. And he's the only one here that I found with abilities. So Jari will be our selection regardless. Our first left-handed defenseman will be Ekholm. I feel like the computers are just going to draft super teams somehow. He has an X factor. 5.5 actually isn't even that bad. He is 38, which is unfortunate, but one year. These guys are very similar. One's making 4.7. One's making 5.5. But Burakovsky's medium top six, and he's medium top nine. I think I'm going to go with Burra, also because we can afford the cap. Ryan Johansson, 8 million. Sure, join the squad. A little Jeff Peach reaction, don't mind if I do. Brady Shea, 83 overall, 5.2 million. Yeah, I don't care. We'll take him anyway. We're going to go with Sean Walker as our last right-handed defenseman. And then we just need a left-handed, and we are good to go. Our backup goalie is going to be Stewie Skinner, simply for the fact that he's medium starter, only 23, and 79 overall. Seems like a good deal to me. Bailey, 90 discipline. He would be sick for the third line. And $5 million. We don't have to worry about it. The crazy thing is... Oh my goodness. The crazy thing is... We still have... 50 million dollars of cap left. Jordan Stahl, sure, come on down. That enough, you're gonna get tons of goals on that third line. I feel like I've seen Will Butcher light it up before, so he will be our final defensive draft pick. And now we just need a fourth line, and Paul Stasny looks very ideal, especially with 85 face-offs for that role. Kyle Ocpozo could be our fourth line right winger. Six million dollars? Meh. Who cares? Who's the left winger with the highest contract left? We have Ladd, but 77 overall, no thanks. I will, however, take Milan Lucic at 79. That is going to be a gritty fourth line. All right, there you have it. Our draft. McKinnon and Gensel are going to be insane together. They got Tom Wilson there as well. We also still ended up with Merkley. I don't know why he always slips so far. Oh, they want Dadunov to play here. He's actually... Very fitting for that line. How is this only a plus one? Okay, we'll run with it. Tom Wilson, Pavelski, and Johansson as line number two. And then we have Bailey, Stasny, Burakovsky, Okpozo, Stahl, and Lucic. Defensively, there is zero chemistry. Well, yeah, li quite literally, there is zero. But that's okay. We have Jari as the starter. Skinner backing him up. I predict 48 wins. We make the playoffs. And I think we're going to go on a bit of a run, too. Whenever I try to... I don't know. My voice is just making me so mad. And that did not help. That kind of hurt, actually. I feel like it's actually very difficult to reach that cap limit with just a draft. But that might mean that players that end up having their contracts expire want more and start asking for a much higher ticket. All right. 3-6-1. and 3-7-1. and one. Oh, boy. We are rotten. All right, enough of that. I am promoting Tom Wilson to line number one. I don't care. And I'm bringing Burakovsky up to the second line. He shoots left, so I'll play him on the left side. Johansson shoots right, so he can play over there. Actually, 85 face-offs to 81. Let's try that out. Pavelski's also right-handed. Yeah, okay, I thought so. Not a big deal. Three-game winning streak since I made those changes. Shootout loss. We take that all day. Yeah, I'm gonna blame it on the best lines. I think they gave me a stinker, and we have fixed it. I mean, we haven't totally fixed it, but... We're doing a lot better than we were, that's for sure. And somehow, even with this record, we're third in our division. So clearly our division is kind of cheeks this season, which absolutely works in our favor. All right, we've been ripping it up with the line changes. Let's go ahead, Simpass Toronto. They dummy us, but let's keep our trading block and enter the deadline to see who is available. We have Patrice Bergeron, Jared Spurgeon, 
not, you know, not a big trade deadline, I gotta say. And on that note, I'll see you later. Let's finish up the season and hope that we can keep the ball rolling here. Oh boy, that's not good. That's really not good. Come on now, thank you. So my win prediction, not happening. Unless we, no, even if we win every game here, it's still not gonna happen. But playoffs are looking like they will happen. Yep, we made it in and we are up against the Pity Pens. 94 points is good enough for third in the Custom Division 4, not the Metro. And that would put us 12th in the league. And it was not the top 16 teams that made it. Nashville made it in at 20. Let's have a look at the President's Trophy winning Calgary Flames. They have Ehlers, Zegris, and Ayafalo. Fair enough. Their second line is Zuccarello, Hughes, and William Nylander. Oh my. And they have Fleury and Nett backed up by Merslikens, Brodine, and Pionk. I guess Nate is not so OP after all. He had 68 points. And we actually had more out of... Joe Pavelski, who had a nice amount. That is crazy. Jake Gensel put up 64. We got 55 from Burakovsky. 51 from Dougie. Jari went 33, 26, and 6. He had five shutouts and a 902, 291. Skinner actually played quite well. He had a 10, 6, and 2 record with a shutout, a 917, and 263. Hellebuck led the league with 37 wins, and he had a 922 save percentage. That is amazing. Fleury had a 920. Spencer Knight down here with a 918. Defensively, the man that I was going to and could have drafted, John. Carlson leads. He had 68 points. Tony D had 66. McCarr 65. Uh, Doughty, Hughes, and Miro all had 64. Rantanen gets the Art Ross convincingly. He had 15 more points than the next player who was Matthews. He was the only one to break 100. And we have 53 goals from Matthews, which looks like it is a Rocket Richard winning season. 50 plus from Kyle Connor. All right, it's playoff time. Let's see how we do. Will we get first rounded? Most likely. Pity. Gonna go up 2-0. We get, okay, okay, didn't see that coming. Next up, the Boston Bruins. All right, not looking great. It is looking good. No, are you kidding me? Oh, <laughs> I think that's my sign that it's enough recording for today. And Boston went on to win the Stanley Cup. Boston finished 10th with 96 points. They had Giroux, Huberto, and Silverberg, Skinner, Couturier, and Palat. Caught Milano, Smith, okay. Olmark and Nett backed up by Ranta, Theodore Latang. Yeah, their team's pretty good. Oh my goodness, it is really time to call it quits. McKinnon did work in the playoffs. He had 13 points, point a game. Jari ended up getting pulled for Skinner at some point, but yeah, he went 7-6-0. and oh. He had a 9-17, 2-58, so he did all right, actually. Allmark, two shutouts in the playoffs, a 9-15. Bobrovsky, the guy I could have drafted, had a 9-25. A 9-34 for Igor. Ottinger and Cal both getting 9-24s. Letang led defenseman. Well, him and Gerard led defenseman. They both had 16 points. Orlov had 15. And Petterson will take home the Conn Smythe, I would imagine. 28 points in 19 games. That is outrageous. Wait, they didn't even win the cup, so maybe not. It might be Huberdo. Although I feel like he deserves it. Can he still win it? Does it work that way? Well, let's have a look at the awards here. Yeah, there you have it. We already knew those two. We know this one as well. Hart goes to Rantanen. Riley gets the Norris. So Arizona cleaning up right now the individual trophies. Kucherov gets the Lady Bang. Shane Wright with the Calder. Hirado gets the Conn Smythe. Hellebuck gets the Vesna and Gibson will take home the Jennings. Travis Hamannick gets the Bill Masterton. Kieran with the Jack Adams. Yeah, wow. Arizona's really doing well in the individual trophy department. Kopitar with the Selkie. Ranted in with the Ted Lindsay and then Matthews as we saw against the Rocket Richard. Here is your playoff tree. I would like to record more videos, but I simply cannot. I think I need to wait till my voice is back because it's just sort of frustrating to be honest with you. But yeah, I had fun with that. That was a interesting draft. And like I said, I don't even think you can, I don't even think you can reach the $125 million simply by drafting because other teams are going to take big contracts. I mean, there are some players that you could take, but why would you? Like 77 overall players with big contracts? No thanks. Well, thank you for watching, guys. I appreciate you. I'll see you soon.